Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to look at a really interesting combinatorics problem from this year's Asia Pacific Mathematics Olympiad. You will not be disappointed because this is really one of a kind question. So without further ado, let us take a look at what this problem is. So this is actually the problem for of this year's Asia Pacific Math Olympiad. So the question is as follows. Given a 32 by 32 table, we put a mouse facing upwards at the bottom leftmost cell of the table and a piece of cheese at several other cells. The mouse then starts moving. It moves forward, except that when it reaches a piece of cheese, it eats a part of it, turns right and continues moving forward. So for example, over here, the mouse moves forward, eats this cheese, turns right, eats this cheese, turns right, eats this, turns right turns right and so on. The cheese is not completely eaten, it's, uh, it only eats a piece of it, so the cheese will still remain after uh, being contacted. So we say that a subset of cells containing the cheese is good if during the process, the mouse tastes its piece of cheese exactly once and then falls off the table. So we are supposed to show that there is no good subset consisting of 888 cells. And second, to show that there exists a good subset consisting of at least 666 cells. So I will go through roughly the intuition on how you may reach the solution before going to the official solution. So after a bit of experimenting, you may come to the realization that perhaps the board cannot be too crowded. It needs to have enough empty space for the mouse to maneuver. For example, if you try to put a cheese here, here and here, the mouse will immediately uh, turn, turn, turn and fall off the table. We want to give enough empty space for the mouse to do loops like this to allow the mouse to travel to the other parts of the table. So maybe we are forced to have certain minimum number of empty cells. Maybe after every certain encounter of pieces of cheese, you are required to have uh, empty cells. So this is actually the intuition that leads on to the official solution. So this is the solution for part A. We are shown that there is no good subset consisting of 888 cells via contradiction. So suppose that we can position 888 cells with cheese and such that is a good configuration. Now what we do is we write out the sequence of cells visited by the mouse using a sequence of C and E where C means the cell has cheese and E means the cell is empty. So in this case, for example, you have empty, empty, cheese, empty, empty, cheese, cheese, empty, cheese, empty, empty, cheese, empty, 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 and so on. Now, I will make two observations that are critical. So the first observation is that each block of C's must be of length 3. So over here, we have length 1, length 2, length 1, length 1. But I claim that we cannot have more than length 3. And the proof is quite simple. So I'll leave you to convince yourself that having four consecutive C's will force the mouse to visit a piece of cheese more than once. Now the second observation is that each empty cell can only be visited at most twice. So this is a bit trickier to realize and I will sketch again the reasoning behind this observation. So the observation is that each empty cell actually can only be visited once horizontally and uh, at most once visit vertically. So what do I mean by this? So let's just take for example this uh, empty cell over here. So when it when it is visited either from the left or the, from the right, right? Uh, what it means is it must have. You look at the horizontal row that it's in, and the the uh, two pieces of cheese that uh, forms the end point of that of that uh, journey. Or the, there might not be a cheese, which means that it will be the end edge of the table instead, uh, being the end of the journey. So if we look at the stretch, horizontal stretch, right, we see that uh, the piece, each piece of cheese on the end points can only be contacted once. So if we travel horizontally, we cannot possibly travel the same horizontal route again without touching the either of these pieces of cheese more than once again. Similarly, look at this empty cell. Can it travel vertically uh, through that cell more than once? No, because if you look at the two pieces of cheese and or edges of the table that flank uh, the sequence of empty cells, we see that the mouse, in order to travel it 
vertically again, you will have to hit the cheese or the edge of table uh, more than once. So th this is both not allowed. So only at most one horizontal tra uh, tra traversing and at most one vertical traversing. So each empty cell can only be visited at most twice. So we put the two observations together. Uh, firstly, each block of C must be of length at most three. Since there are eight, eight, eight occurrences of C's, then this gives at least two nine six blocks of C's. And since the C's are separated by one or more, or rather the blocks of C's are separated by one or more occurrences of E's, this means that there's at least two nine six occurrences of E. Uh, given that we start with an E as well. But if you, uh, you want to look at just the gaps between the blocks, it's 295 occurrences of E's. Now the second claim cell tells us that each empty cell can only be visited at most twice. So to contribute to 296 occurrences of E's, we need to have at least 148 empty cells. So we have 888 cheese cells and at least 148 empty cells, and this gives at least 1036 cells, which is a contradiction because your table only has 1024 cells. So this proves that uh, we cannot possibly have 888 cells having cheese and the configuration being good. Okay, so now let's look at part B, uh, which is to show that there exists a good subset consisting of at least 66 cells. So this is really where the fun begins, and we'll use a recursive construction method uh, to produce the good configuration. So what we'll do is for each positive integer n, we'll construct two types of board design. The first type, uh, which I'll call Ln, is a 2 to the power n by 2 to the power n board design, which I will design so that it is guaranteed to have the following properties. Firstly, if it enters from the bottom left traveling upwards, it will, it will move around the board, right? And it, when it exits, it will exit from the uh, bottom left cell traveling leftwards. And in doing so, it will eat each piece of cheese exactly once before exiting. So I call this board design LN to give a mnemonic that is uh, about turning left. The second board design which we will construct is a 2 to the power n by 2 to the power n board design, which we will construct to guarantee to have the following properties. Uh, firstly, if it enters from bottom left traveling upwards, it will move around the board and when it exits, you will exit uh, at, the bot at the top right, traveling rightwards. And if it were to enter from the top right cell, uh, traveling downwards, it will move around the board and when it exits, it will exit at the bottom left cell, traveling leftwards. And if we take that two paths together, so the superposition or the union, the two paths will eat each piece of cheese exactly once. So I call this board design uh, XN as a mnemonic for uh, crossing, the paths will, will cross. Okay, so uh, for the base case, right, we have to construct it explicitly. So for L1, we see that this design works. It's a two by two board. And by putting the pieces of cheese here, if the mouse enters uh, as shown by the light blue arrow, it will eat each piece of cheese exactly once and exit uh, via the dark blue arrow, which is what we desire. Now for X1, we will put the two pieces of cheese here. If the mouse enters via the light blue arrow, indeed it exits via the dark blue arrow. And if it enters via the light green arrow, indeed it exits via the dark green arrow. And the two roots together will eat each piece of cheese exactly once. Okay, so given that we constructed Ln and Xn, how do we construct Ln plus 1 and Xn plus 1? So we do it recursively. Uh, so for Ln plus 1, we will put a copy of Xn here. We will put a copy of Ln prime, which is uh, Ln rotated rightwards by 90 degrees. Uh, so that means the mouse entering this way will exit this way. Then we put a copy of Ln, and we put a copy of Ln prime, which is the Ln rotated leftwards by 90 degrees. So this time the mouse, if it enters this way, it will exit this way. Okay, so to check that this design works, we just follow the arrows, uh, check the conditions that we need. So suppose the mouse enters uh, as follows. Then by the property of Xn, the mouse will exit the quadrant here. 
and by property of ln prime, the mouse will exit the quadrant here. By property of ln, the mouse will exit the quadrant here. By property of ln triple prime, the mouse will exit the quadrant here. By property of xn, entering here will cause the mouse to exit here. And overall, the mouse enters here, moves around the board and exits here. And at the same time, it uh, collects this piece of all the cheese here at this uh, exactly once. The cheese here exactly once, exactly once. And for xn, it moves, it covers both paths exactly once. So it again covers all the pieces of cheese exactly once. How about uh, xn plus one? So similarly, we will put uh, xn, ln prime, xn, and ln triple prime. And we just check that the conditions are met. So for first, suppose the mouse enters here. I'll leave you to check that uh, the x the mouse will follow the red arrows as shown. So exit here, then exit here, then exit here, which is what we want uh, for the first property of x. Then second property, if it enters here, what happens? It exits here, and then it exits here, and then it exits here, which is exactly what we want for the second property of x. And then we can check that the two paths together will eat each piece of cheese exactly once by the various properties of the xn and ln. So indeed, uh, this is a design for xn plus 1. So very good. The critical question is how many pieces of cheese do we end up putting on the table? So let the lowercase letters signify the uh, number of cheese. Uh, L1 would be 3 and X1 would be 2. And we can very easily form the recursion relation for LN plus 1 and XN plus 1. So by rolling out the recursion relation directly by hand, we can see that L5 would be 683, which is at least 666. And L5 fits the bill because the mouse, you can check that all the designs of L and X will have the bottom leftmost cell empty. So the left, the mouse entering uh, from bottom leftmost cell from the uh, bottom is as good as the mouse starting off at the bottom leftmost cell. And it will go through the board and covers each piece of cheese exactly once before falling off. And there's at least uh, 666 cells of cheese in the process. So that's all for this solution. Uh, what do you think of this problem? It's actually a problem that is quite interesting in my opinion. So stay tuned to more problems on this channel. Do hit the subscribe button and see you soon.